Kingdom Come Deliverance is an open world RPG that may remind you of Elder Scrolls or Mountain Blade, allowing you to immerse yourself in a medieval world of knights, peasants and big fat awesome castles. But as you may expect, the game has design choices that could be altered for a better gaming experience. Just take one look at Skyrim and the meme amount of re-releases and the 50 billion amazing mods you can find from the talented mod community. However, Kingdom Come is a hard and challenging game that rewards clever gameplay and certainly skilled players in combat, which is a great step forward from the melee combat of an Elder Scrolls game which is comparatively pretty weak. So for the modern community, you might be tempted to go with the obvious choices that make the game easier to step into and by all means, you can download whatever mods you want, it's your game, it's all good. But today, I want to share with you some alternatives that keep the core of the game while making your experience better and easier to get into than the most popular Kingdom Come mods out there right now. This is alternatives to the popular Kingdom Come mods that may ruin your sweet, sweet immersion. So let's check out some mods. Here's the ever popular mod website Nexus Mods. Arranging the search by most downloads of all time since the release of the game just a few weeks ago, you can see some obviously popular choices by the community. Unlimited saving, a bow reticle mod, and easy lockpicking which basically allows you to instantly unlock doors and stashes makes up the top three most downloaded mods for Kingdom Come. While mods that have much less direct impact and are arguably less immersion ruining are a little bit lower down on the list. For the uninitiated, Kingdom has a punishing but very immersive save system, which is very simple. You can only save manually via sleeping or drinking, an alcoholic drink called Save Your Snaps, making everything you do in the game, from poor choice, failures or mistakes in combat, count for a lot more. Your actions then have a much greater consequence because you aren't able to spam save and reload, ultimately causing you to have a janky and, well, weaker experience. That's just... It's just not immersive, bro. But if you're coming from Elder Scrolls to Kingdom Come, it's gonna feel very awkward to be unable to save in a somewhat unlimited way. So my advice to you is rather than slap on that unlimited save mod, just do some alchemy, pick some flowers ASAP to craft yourself some save your snaps. And you can do this in a very unlimited way that's not immersion breaking at all. So if you really care to reload every time that you feel like something relevant's gonna happen, then you can but with an in-game system. To do this, you'll need the ability to read, gather herbs, and an alchemy station. Hey look, there's one that you can use for free all the time right there in Ratai. To make a save your snaps, you just need one nettle and two belladonna to craft yourself the drink. Oh, and a little bit of wine, but that's at the herb station anyway. Once you have these, just perform the process in the right order. I've linked a fantastic guide that couldn't be made any easier to understand on how to make yourself some save your snaps in the description below from fellow YouTuber Nixium. He did a great job. So with your unlimited source of snaps, you can save whenever you feel you should, but not to outrageous lengths where you reload every three seconds, because well, you messed up on that dialogue or you lost a fight. But if you really want to do that, just make yourself an extra drink and pop it whenever you feel like it. Next up on the top three popular Kingdom Gun mods is the Bow Reticle mod, basically putting a dot in the middle of your screen to make aiming about a billion times easier with a bow. So if you're really struggling with that tree, then sure, this is a valid option for you. But wait, there's a better alternative way that keeps your immersion safe and sound. It's called Faster Arrows, the mod, and it makes your arrows fly at a much more realistic and, well, faster speed. If you slap on that reticle mod, what's going to happen is the same awkward archery, only now you can see where the middle of the screen is more accurately I suppose. The arrows simply fly so slowly in Kingdom Come it's a bit strange. As you're beginning and learning archery with lower stats then yeah it makes sense that you you know can't draw the bow as effectively loosing arrows at lightning speed and so on. But what about when you are pretty high level and adapt to archery? Well the arrows still fall flat. Using the faster arrows mod those boys will fly out like real arrows giving you the proper potential to hunt and fight with a bow at much greater ranges. And if you really want to keep that bow reticle mod on, at least now the arrows will go where the dot actually is with a combination of these two mods. Honestly, my advice on this is just to pan the bow reticle mod, slap on the faster arrows mod, and get some real archery in. It does feel amazing to land shots in Kingdom, and now you shoot from good ranges, it feels even better. All the while, your immersion is 10 out of 10 intact, and if I can do it, then you surely can too. I mean, 
Look at me, hideous. Finally, the third most downloaded mod is Easy Lockpicking. This mod allows you to instantly unlock doors and stashes depending on your level of lockpicking. I mean, come on, we're talking about a mini game right now where you find a spot, a sweet spot, and then spin a wheel, keeping the cursor on that spot as it goes around. It takes about, well, two brain cells to find the spot, and the tricky bit, with a little bit of practice, is knowing how to keep your cursor in the right place as you twist the lock. Now, obviously, this isn't exactly what picking a lock would really be like IRL, right? But it's a good version of it that takes a little bit of skill and practice, more so as you start attempting harder locks. There's a different way to make mods improve your experience though, guys. And if you find this really hard, which I can understand, there's different ways to mod to improve your experience, guys, and making everything brain dead easy just isn't the only one. Here's a great alternative mod to easy lockpicking that won't be so invasive. Sectorial lockpicking is a simple mod. It provides a visual to your lockpicking experience that greatly impacts your understanding of how to beat this minigame. It divides a lock into sectors, which is now allowing you to see which spot to keep the pick under as you twist the lock. Rather than just freehanding it, you find the sweet spot in one of these sections and then follow that section around as you go. This makes the experience easier to understand while not immersion ruining. And once you feel confident because you practiced using this mod, you could even remove the mod to give yourself the real challenge whenever you want. And that's a great training wheel mod as I can see it. Finally, if you want to do something extra that has no impact on your gameplay, as someone who keeps reloading his game to try out new mods, here's one that slaps you in the face with its simplicity. It's skip intro videos. Literally, skipping the introduction videos that play each time you open the game, which are long and quite drawn out, saving you seconds the first time you use it, but then a nice chunk of time when you open it again next month after your 50th game session. Nothing groundbreaking about this mod necessarily, it's just simple and straightforward without cheating in-game. That's a good mod. And there you have it, my little talk on modding and alternatives to the somewhat immersion ruining popular choices that are already out there. I'm planning on showcasing some real immersion mods soon and also some ease of life mods too. There's a lot out there, all tailored to whatever style of game you're looking for, immersive or ease of life or whatever, and I'm really looking forward to showcasing the good ones. Thanks for watching you knave. Good luck with Henrying up the kingdom, and a special thank you and shout out to my Patreon supporters who make videos like this possible. Thank you for all the support, and a special thanks to Baz, Martino, and Mikhail who show silly levels of support. I love you guys. Goodbye, and see you next time.